Alicia Liao, best known for her role in establishing the fabled Ares Conventions, passed away on December 20th, 2415. The Chancellorship was not yet a hereditary title, and so Arden Baxter became the first non-Liao to hold the position. Less than half a century had passed since the Great House had supplanted the ruling Aris family as the dominant power in the Capellan Zone. Old resentments still lingered under the surface. Baxter, one-time supporter of Warren Aris, had been imprisoned following the takeover, but later pardoned and welcomed back to the House of Scions. The decision of the ruling prefecturate to nominate him as Chancellor after Alicia's death was meant as a conciliatory action to unify the different factions in government. Baxter's true feelings quickly became clear as he launched a propaganda campaign to recharacterize past Liao chancellors as entirely self-serving while fermenting rebellion among Republican elements within the Confederation. Reversing Liao dominance became his primary goal. Arden believed that their strength was tied to the military and so continually pushed for a reduction in their forces. In his 10 years in office, he dissolved more than 20% of the Capellan regiments and also dismissed many of their most experienced generals for showing signs of allegiance to Liao over the current chancellor. Making these changes while simultaneously launching the Rim War against the Torian Concordat highlighted the danger Baxter posed to the Confederation. No sooner had this conflict concluded, Arden Baxter made efforts to unify the Confederation, Torians, the neighboring Duchy of Andurian, and several minor periphery systems into an anti free Wells League alliance to be known as the Thousand World Coalition. This saber rattling, coupled with the Chancellor's refusal to recognize Simon Davian as First Prince of the Federated Sons, proved too much for the people of the Confederation. In 2425, on his way to the House of Scions, Arden Baxter was shot dead by a member of Marion's Highlanders. Alicia Liao's nephew Stephen was chosen as the next Chancellor and immediately set about reversing his predecessor's actions. Believing that Baxter's antagonism towards their neighbours had all but guaranteed they would move aggressively in the near future, Stephen channeled much of the Confederation's economy into expanding their military. At first, this move seemed prudent. The armed forces quickly surpassed in size and capabilities any Liao could previously muster. But as the years passed by without any of the predicted conflicts, unrest at all levels of Capellan society grew. The common citizens were taxed heavily and their wages capped in order to continue to expand the armed forces. The Confederation's intelligence agency, the Mashkarovka, hunted for any evidence of wrongdoing among the nobility as pretext for seizing their estates, the Chancellor again funneling that wealth into the military. Stephen had become known as the Great Organizer as his obsession with the Capellan armed forces grew, frequently conducting parade drills around his palace until his death in 2450. During his time in office, many of his best officers had amassed considerable political power, foremost among which was General Raoul Merrick. Believing he posed a danger to his family, the new Chancellor, Duncan Liao, moved to curb his influence by disbanding parts of the military loyal to Merrick. The general retaliated swiftly, calling his grenadiers to Siam and occupying the Jade Palace, ushering in what is known in Capellan history as the Time of Tribulation. For seven months, the Confederation was ruled by Merrick's junta. The Chancellor, imprisoned within his home, finally realized that no one could make a move against the rogue general as long as he remained a hostage. In February 2452, Duncan Liao took his own life. His older sister Jasmine, Colonel of the 2nd Hexera Lancers, immediately proclaimed herself Chancellor. With the safety of Duncan tragically no longer at risk, she ordered an assault on the palace, leading the attack on the Forbidden City herself. A two-day battle saw all of the Grenadiers destroyed and General Raoul Merrick killed, bringing to an end the First Tribulation. The Loyalist Regiment was subsequently renamed the Red Lancers, and they have served as the Liao family's personal guard ever since. The Second Tribulation followed soon after, when Jasmine initiated a brutal purge within her officer corps. The Mashkarovka rounded up 233 high-ranking individuals and sentenced them to death. She then assumed personal command of all borders and divisions within the armed forces, 
a role that would be passed on to future chancellors. A limit was imposed on rank, and since 2455, the Capellan military has not made use of any positions above colonel, preventing any challenges to the Liao family from that corner. The third tribulation came when she moved to chastise the House of Scions, the so-called Lawyers Guild. Their inability to free her brother from captivity and their apparent willingness to work with Rao Maddox's military junta left her doubting their loyalties. Like so many times in history, what was first passed as emergency powers was quickly used to circumvent any balances and checks on power altogether. By the end of her reign in 2477, Jasmine Liao had made the Capellan Confederation's transition from representative government to complete autocracy irreversible. 